All right, um, morning class. Um, so what I'm doing uh, in this video is showing you how to create a digital collage. So we'll all be having a go at making digital collages today using Photopea. Um, and I've done one in the style of Cape Powell. Um, so we've got like animals on a background. It can be a plain background if you want. It doesn't have to be a galaxy, like either works. Uh, and using a very similar, well, exactly the same technique actually, done a rough one um, of Agnes Cecile. These aren't, these don't need to be perfect, um, you know, finished, you know, uh, digital photography pieces. This is just to help you make references for you to work from. So putting all your images together and arranging it how you want to, okay? So the first thing you need to think about when you're looking at your artist's work, like this um, or this, do you want your piece to be landscape or portrait? So for a Kate Powell piece, I want a landscape, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. First thing you do to start a new project is you go to File and you go to New and then click on Print here and then click A3. Don't forget to name it. So I'm just going to call this one Demo. And it should automatically open Portrait. To get it to go Landscape, if you want a landscape, click on image, then go to transform and click on rotate 90 uh, and that will flip it for you like this. Uh, and then the next thing you need to do is to get your images in. So you can either drag them off the desktop, um, which I can't show you because as soon as I close this window, it stops recording. So I'm going to do it this, this way. You go to file and you go to open. Uh, and then you can't see the window that's jumped up, but it opens uh, my desktop. And then you just select the images from the folder on your desktop uh, to open. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to select the fish that I want to open. I've got the model that I've opened um, to use. And okay, so we've got all the so we've got the fish, the free fish, and the model. Um, and then I'm going to select my move tool, and you see I've got the different images that I've opened along the top here. So I'm going to find the model, select the move tool so I can drag it around and then I'm going to put it onto my new empty canvas like this. So she's on there now. And then you'll notice if you've got transform controls ticked, uh, like I said in previous demo, you'll have these squares around here, which means you can enlarge. Remember when you enlarge, you've got to hold the shift key down. If you don't hold the shift key down, you might accidentally end up squashing her like this or changing her shape so so don't do that make sure you're holding your shift key down um, to get this and then what i would recommend if you're using photos from school hopefully they were taken on a plain white background i would recommend taking your photo on a plain background because it makes it easier to cut out um, also notice how the hair is tied up here if you've got lots of individual loose strands of, of hair or details, that also makes it very hard to um, cut out. So, for instance, if we use the quick selection tool, which is a lifesaver for these kinds of uh, resource making exercises, if you just click that, see how it's selected around the outline there really well, actually. But if you were to do that with hair that was kind of lots of strands coming out, it doesn't as successfully and neatly um, select the outline. So you want to be careful about what image you use. Um, if, you, if there is an image you really want to use uh, and it's got lots of intricate bits to cut out, then still use it, but maybe use the magnetic lasso tool instead and you can go around and you can cut round yourself and you can manually select it like that, okay? Remember how that works. You gotta go all the way around and then join the last dot with the first dot to make the selection, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna quit that because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not using that today. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna want to do is to maybe lighten the background a bit. So I go image, adjustments, and brightness and contrast. And this brings this up here. And then I can just brighten the image, see? You don't want to go too bright, but I'm just brightening it so that grey background kind of is a little lighter. And then I can go to my quick selection tool and just click on our model 
if I'm not happy with what it's selected, I'll do select and deselect, and I might try again. Mm, very similar. Okay, so go edit, copy, and then edit, paste. And then you'll notice in the layer box, I've got now I've got two layers. Well, I've got the background, I've got the original, and I've got the one that I've just cut out. So if I hide the original, see the background disappears. Uh, and now what you'll find is if I zoom in with control and plus, you'll see I've got lots of jaggedy bits that aren't quite so neat. So what I might do is just select the eraser tool here, and I might just go around and just neaten up just the edges here. You just need a, a steady hand on the mouse and just go around and neaten it up. Um, if you're a perfectionist, you might want to go in on the detail and really just try to get that as neat as you can. But again, this isn't for photography, really. This is for you to, to help you create resources that you can work from in arts, that you can draw from. So you may not want to go in uh, and, and be this fine with the final outcome, you know. You want to make it as neat as you can to work from, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I've made a messy job of that. I actually preferred the way it looked before. So I'm just going to just click back in my history to undo any mistakes I don't like and fix it like that. Okay, so I've got my model cut out very quickly on a plain white background. Now what I can do, I select my move tool. I need to get the fish in. Or if it, you know, looking at Kate Powell's work, it could be animals uh, like birds she uses a lot of. Um, like for inspiration, I could open, let's have a look. Inspiration, I might have this image. So I've got my Kate Powell image there. She's used fish here. Um, so I'm going to go through and just drag my fish into my demo piece. Have another one here. Drag it on. Okay, so I've got my three different fish here you'll notice they're still on their white backgrounds. So all I did to find these was I googled fish on white background. I would recommend for a very quick and easy edit, you want to get your um, images on a white background because it makes it so quick and easy. And then all you're going to do here is, if you look at where it says normal there, I'm going to change this to darken. And what Darken does is it only shows the part of that image that's darker than the images it's on top of. And because we're using a white background here, that means it gets rid of our white background on the fish um, and make, almost makes it see-through. So again, if I've got a fish on a white background here and I change this normal panel there to Darken, it gets rid of the white and I've just got the fish and then I can rotate, enlarge, do it for the last one here. Um, if you want to, like I want to on this one, I want to flip it. It's easier to find the image in its own panel at the top there. Go to edit, transform and then flip horizontally and that will flip it in the opposite direction. And then I can have a fish like this uh, in the opposite direction, which is, I quite want that one facing the other way. Um, so I'm just gonna do normal and darken again, and then brilliant, I've got that fish like that. We can click on the corners to rotate, enlarge, move it around so the composition is how you want it. And that's a very quick um, Kate Powell style edit. If you want to get rid of any um, watermarks that are on, you just get your eraser tool, get rid of them. Make sure you're on the correct layer. So you, you can turn them on and off like this. You can hide them to make double sure what, what layer you're on. So I can get rid of these little camera watermarks here so it doesn't distract me when I'm painting this or illustrating from it. Just get rid of them like that, neaten up like that. And that's a really quick way of, of getting that kind of a, an edit. Now, I was showing a galaxy background before. So if you want to open a galaxy, uh, well, 
if you want a different background on it that's not just um, white, uh, if you're looking to kind of make a background, then just do the same, open your image, get your move tool and then just drag it in. Um, so this is an edit that I did before uh, where I've already dragged it in and dropped the background on like this. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be a galaxy. This is just a good example of uh, like an interesting background that might be relevant to people's themes. Um, you can move this around like that. You'll notice though, when you do this yourselves, if you've just done the white background fish, what you'll have is your fish will look like this because your fish uh, have been made to be darker than whatever the background is. If you add a different background that's, that's darker than the fish, they'll fade away. So if you're gonna start using a, a different colored background and you're using the fish on the very quick edit um, that I've shown you, and you've got them on darken instead of normal, what that will do is it will make them so you can't see them. So if you want to use a different background and have the fish so you can see them, you'll have to have the fish on a normal. So see there, they're on normal, okay? But in order to get that, this is what they would have looked like before I cut them out, okay? So in order to get that, you'll have to manually cut them out with the magnetic lasso tool. So I've manually cut these fish out and then done edit, copy, edit, paste, um, to be able to get them to show on a background. I think the advantage of doing that, once you have, it takes a little longer, and I'm not going to do that in this video because it'll be like half an hour long, but once you have done that, the advantage of, of, of doing that will be uh, you can then do whatever you want to this background. So if I select the background and then I go edit, fill, um, if you go to custom and click on the colour, you can choose any colour you want uh, to fill the background with, um, like this. So you can experiment with what different colour backgrounds might look like, um, which is really nice. And then if you go to image adjustments and then go to hue and saturation, well, just taking its time. Sometimes it might take its time. You just got to be a bit patient. Um, you can change the hue the colour of the background so you can experiment without having to paint yourself um, and maybe ruin a piece if you're not sure about the, what colour you want to use uh, in the background you can just change an experiment like this likewise with the galaxy if I go back before I filled it I can do image adjustments hue and saturation and I can just see what the background uh, galaxy would look like if I change the colours by just moving the hue like this. So it's not having a massive effect, it's kind of changing that orangey part in the background. Um, but yeah, so you can you, you can use hue in that way as well. Um, Agnes Cecile, you might just want to keep the background plain. I mean, Kate Powell. Um, certainly with Agnes Cecile, you want to keep the background plain. And I've done this in exactly the same way. This image was harder to cut out. So this image wasn't as successful to cut out because the edges aren't as defined. See, it's really blurry and it blends in with the background. So when I'd actually finished cutting this one out, it actually, it looked like this. So it's a, a little rougher around the ears, um, not quite as neat. But for resources, you know, this wouldn't be acceptable for a photography final piece. But for resources for you to work from, it's absolutely fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then in, in exactly the same way, I found leaves on a white background and I set them to darken so that all the white box around them would disappear. And it's only showing the leaves that I want to show, okay? And then you can move these around. You can enlarge them, rotate them. Another thing I've used here, which is really useful, is I've changed the opacity. So if we look at this leaf here, um, you've got opacity up here and you can change that. So you can make them see-through. You can change how see-through they are, how visible they are. So for this big leaf that goes across the face here, it was originally like this. 
I thought that was a bit harsh. And, you know, some of Agnes Cecile's work, if we look at that piece in particular, I like how you can see the face through the leaves. So that, that was my inspiration really for this. And you, you can just change that opacity here by moving that, sliding that opacity up and down there. So you are in full control of how much you see. You can almost make it look quite painterly already just by changing the opacity. 67, so this one's quite dark. I might want to make it more see-through like that, completely disappear, or I can bring it back as, as strong as I like or as weak as I like. So that's just giving you a few of the tools that I would use to make a very quick collage, okay? Um, to save it, very importantly, you need to go to File and then Save as PSD. And what that will do is it will save all of the layers that you've been working with. So when you click File and Save as PSD, it will take a while just to so just give it a, a while and it should pop up at the bottom and tell you that it's saved. Um, and then you just need to find where that has been saved. Mine saves to my desktop automatically, okay? Um, so that's it for that one. Brilliant. Do let us know if you have any questions. Make sure you watch the videos first. Um, it's a really good, the, the best way to get confident with Photopea is to just use it. So the more you use it and experiment with it, the better, the easier uh, it will become as well. Okay, brilliant.